Hello YouTube, Dave here again. So recently someone asked in my comment section if there was any information from previous edition books uh, that they might be able to use for their 5th edition Forgotten Realms games. Specifically, they wanted information on the city of Neverwinter. Uh, Neverwinter is a city that is mentioned often in several of the D&D adventure products that have come out for 5th edition. It's been referenced um, at least name dropped in books such as the Waterdeep Dragon Heist, where it's all about you know Lord Neverember uh, and some of the things that sort of he did after or before he essentially ditched uh, Waterdeep for Neverwinter. Uh, it's also the city that you start in at the very beginning of the Lost Mine of Fandelver campaign uh, that was included in the D and D Fifth Edition, the original Fifth Edition starter set. So it's a city that gets mentioned a lot, but hasn't actually had a lot done with it uh, in Fifth Edition. It's mentioned in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and there's a little bit of information I think given about it there. Uh, but there are other sources of information about the city in other uh, books that have been brought out or that have come out in the past. And today, I want to shine the spotlight on the Neverwinter campaign setting for 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons. This is one that is actually currently available for print on demand or just as a PDF on DMs Guild. So this is something that you'd be able to get a modern or a brand new version of it, a brand new copy of it uh, with very little hassle. So it's not like trying to track down some of the other books um, from previous editions that go for pretty ridiculous prices. Uh, so yeah, I want to take a look at this one here. Now, this was a 4th edition product, a 4th edition campaign setting. So there are going to be some 4E options, abilities, uh, stat blocks, and things along those lines. Um, but I don't necessarily think that they don't have value either. Uh, I think some of the abilities that are in here could be adapted or converted uh, for, you know, 5th edition D&D, and the stat blocks at the very least might give you some ideas of some abilities that NPCs might, you might want to have them be able to use in a 5th edition game. So there's a lot of stuff that I think could still be useful even amongst those stat blocks. But what I'm going to do here is sort of flip through this and uh, just show some of the contents here. Uh, mainly I want to focus on uh, this, this is the information that I think would be the most useful, which is sort of information on the different factions uh, operating in and around the Neverwinter area, as well as the Gazetteer, which has the city itself detailed um, in there, as well as some other environments like Gondelgrim, uh, and it also has a Shadowfell equivalent uh, in the city of uh, Evernight. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. So let's just get right into it, shall we? So the first little bit of information here, the introduction gives you nine hallmarks of a Neverwinter campaign. This is information that is completely edition neutral. You can use this in any edition uh, D&D because this is simply suggestions or things to keep in mind when designing your own adventures. Um, the Neverwinter campaign setting book was part of this huge multimedia release uh, celebrating the city of Neverwinter back in, I think it was 2011, yeah. So 2011 is when this first came out, and this was around the time that they launched the Neverwinter MMO, which I played for a bit and I enjoyed to a point. Um, once it got to the point where you really couldn't solo things, um, I stopped really playing it and I never really went back, so I, I could be missing out um, if it's even still active. But uh, there was the MMO, but there was also some novels, like R.A. Salvatore had this Neverwinter series of novels with Gonald Grimm, Neverwinter itself. It was like a four book uh, arc, which was really, actually really enjoyable to read. Uh, so I really like that quite a bit. Uh, so here is the table of contents. So we have the introduction chapter, Jewel of the North. Uh, chapter 1, Chapter 2 is Character Options, so we're only going to briefly look at that. But then we have Factions and Foes, the Gazetteer, and uh, yeah, so let's get right into it, shall we? So again, the Jewel of the uh, Neverwinter and the North is, again, a lot of flavor text, which is great um, for you to be able to use. So this is information that will be, you know, 100% useful out of the uh, out of the gate, you don't have to worry about converting stats or anything like that. Uh, the history of conflict goes into the uh, the timeline of the Neverwinter region, uh, which is also great information to have. It's some stuff that you could use to sort of plant some seeds uh, for some potential stories that you want to tell going forward, which is great. Uh, information on running a Neverwinter campaign, so some of the stuff uh, to look for there. And then we're going to get into our character options. Like I said, these are all uh, fourth edition stuff. 
but there's some useful information in here that you may want to look at as well. Uh, I'm not going to go too, too much into it here at this point in time, uh, but let's just take a look at, um, like, let's just look at one of the War Priest uh, domain abilities, because these are things, like I said, I think you might be able to convert into 5th uh, edition. So uh, this one here, uh, the, the abilities in this book are tied to specific deities and give you different abilities based on the deity that you are worshipping. So this one here is just for Corlon, so this is the, like the god of the elves. So, for example, if you were an elven cleric, there's an ability here. Um, if you're a war priest of uh, Corallon, it's called uh, Fairy Flame Strike. Uh, so what it is, your weapon channels this radiant energy. Uh, when you hit the target with it, they become engulfed with it, and they take extra radiant damage or radiant and fire damage. So it's it's both of those. Uh, and uh, when you hit with it uh, until the end of your next turn, the target cannot benefit from concealment. So it's like the the fairy fire spell. Um, so it's kind of like um, almost like a sacred flame mixed in with fairy fire, um, all at the head of a weapon. So this is an ability, I think it'd be pretty easy to put into 5th uh, edition if you are a war priest, like you have the, the war domain, I guess. And let's just say you worshipped Corallon, so this is an ability that you could convert. Um, you could either have it so that it is a channel divinity ability that you have to be second level to use, or it could just be one of the abilities granted by um, Corallon to any of their worshippers at first level. So you can sort of decide that on your own. Um, so this would be a weapon attack. Now here it says uh, Wisdom versus AC. That's not really the way that the 5th edition stuff works. So it would just be a simple weapon attack. Um, but if the weapon hits, then it says here you would do two weapon dice. So you would, whatever weapon, whatever die your weapon was using, for example, you'd roll two of them. So if you were using a, like a war hammer, it would be 2d8 instead of 1d8. Um, so the way that you could look at this here is it would just be bonus damage added to your regular weapon damage. And it's up to you to choose. It could be something as simple as a d4, a d6, or, you know, a d8. I really wouldn't go any higher than 1d8. Um, but yeah, yeah, they so would do that extra damage. And then until the end of your next turn, the target cannot benefit from concealment. And you could have this ability can only be used, like you have to um, use, uh, you, you can only use it again if you've taken a short or long rest, and then you get it back. Or you could even just have it be like a once a, once a day thing, or even like I said, have it as a channel divinity uh, option uh, for second level characters. So again, there's just ways that you can use these options and uh, put them into 5th um, edition D&D with not a ton of work. So I think it's something that would definitely be uh, would definitely be doable. But like I said, we're not really looking at the, this, this section specifically. We are more interested in the um, Neverwinter-specific campaign setting information. So this is where Chapter 3 comes in. This is Factions and Foes. Uh, so this starts on page 84. And to be fair, this is a 223-page book. So this is a pretty significant portion of the book that's dedicated to uh, setting information. This will include some stat blocks and some abilities or options thrown in here and there, but there's still a lot of great flavor text to use here. So with uh, the factions and foes, <clears throat> it just gives you, again, all the movers or shakers that are operating within uh, the city of Neverwinter itself, like Lord uh, Dagolt Neverember, who I believe canonically is still uh, the, the leader of Neverwinter. I'm pretty sure that's still the case. Um, then it gives, you know, information on the mayor, information on what happens if uh, Neverember were to uh, were to perish. So there's, you know, it, it does think of a lot of stuff here. So one of the factions involved is the Abolithic uh, Sovereignty. So these are Aboliths, um, these like aquatic, uh, you know, Lovecraftian type creatures that um, basically use mental powers to dominate and enslave the minds of those who are unfortunate enough to happen upon uh, where they are. So this just, it gives you their history, their goals, um, and their, um, you know, the, the, like their ultimate goal relationships with other uh, operation or other factions or individuals operating within Neverwinter and some encounters, which if you don't use, like you don't use the actual encounter chart provided here, but it can give you some ideas of what types of things you might want to uh, to use if you're using this faction. So again, there's a lot of great information there. Um, we have plague, cha uh, plague changed monsters, which like the spell plague still leaves some scars behind. So it gives you some information there. Uh, the prophet of Helm's Hold, 
the Corrupted Green Dragon. And then we get into the Ishmadi, uh, which are a faction that are devil worshippers. A lot of them are composed of tieflings, but they're dedicated uh, to the worship of Osmodius and uh, the, the goals of you know, the, the Ashmadi in uh, Neverwinter, so it gets into all that. Um, they're sort of at odds with the, they're, they're at odds with both the Thans, which were operating in the area, as well as the Abolis. So there, you could have a situation where you might end up having to team up with them to take on one of the others, or, you know, sort of um, maneuver things so that the other factions might uh, start to take a special interest in them. So again, lots of great information here to use for them as well. Then we have the Thans, which were largely responsible for the near destruction of Neverwinter when the volcanic uh, Mount Hotano, uh, and yes, that's the name they gave it, uh, erupted. Um, so there was essentially this, this primordial, this sleeping primordial underneath the mountain. Uh, primordials were sort of the equivalents and the opponents of gods. So they were sort of like their equals or they were very close to them in power. So there was this huge war between the primordials and, and, the, uh, and the gods, which is actually referenced in the Wildmont uh, campaign setting for 5th edition. It actually mentions the, uh, the primordials in their battles with, uh, with the gods. In the Forgotten Realms, the solution to that war, the way to end the war, was to separate the two into their own different realities. Um, and that's where the split between Abir and Toril took place. Uh, in Abir, the uh, the primordials ruled. They were the ones that essentially gained control of that world, and then the deities took control of Toril, which is where the basic Forgotten Realms campaign setting takes place. And so, um, anyway, the 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 uh, the Thans were they they're the ones that tried to awaken that primordial, try to harness its power, and they were the ones that ultimately nearly led to the destruction of Neverwinter, which was all part of trying to control the primordial. They created this like ash ring in the Neverwinter Woods that was going to harness um, just the energy that was released from like thousands of people being destroyed by the the eruption, and use that to uh, to summon or to not to summon but to to awaken and try to control uh, the primordial. So it gives you their their goals there. Valindra Shadow Mantle, one of my favorite uh, villains in uh, recent history for you know Forgotten Realms in specific. Then you have the uh, the Netherese or the Shade Empire, if you you know, because unfortunately with fifth edition, uh, Netheril went back to being the Anorak Desert, which I I kind of hated. I well, I really liked the fact that the Netherese uh, returned and that the uh, the desert became, you know, this lush landscape once again controlled by them. So anyway, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, then we have information on the Harper, so they're one of the major factions that you can choose as a player character. The Many Arrows Orcs, so it gives you a little bit of information on them as well, because uh, they were sort of one of the big movers or shakers, um, at least at some point during the history of uh, the Neverwinter Saga, I guess you could say. And then you have the the Drow faction, uh, Bregg and Dareth, which is ruled by Jarlaxle, so some stuff on them as well. Uh, some of the, the barbarian tribes that operate in the area, uh, the Cult of the Dragon, some Thay, and then we get into Gontelgrim itself um, with some of the creatures that are in there, including Mind Flayers, one of my favorite creatures, Durgar, and House Zorlin, uh, or sorry, uh, Zo Zolaren. Uh, so this is one of the, the drow houses that I believe left Menzo Berenzen. Um, which allowed uh, House Duerden to return to the ruling council. It's a whole, it's a whole thing there. Um, but they were, you know, the, they were they set out to take over Gontelgrim and uh, have it become like a Drow satellite city to Menzo Brenzen. Fortunately, it didn't quite work out the way that they wanted it to. Um, but there you go. There's some information on them there. And then we get to the Gazetteer, which is your campaign setting. So. Uh, we have the map of Neverwinter, shows the scar uh, created during the volcanic eruption, sort of some of the devastated areas. Um, and then you have like where the sort of the newer, the rebuilt portions of it are as well. So like you see here where the chasm is, it sort of looks like it's like walled off and kind of like the destroyed part of the city. Um, so again, there's stuff that you could do there. You could have to go and like try to retrieve or uncover uh, certain relics or artifacts that may have been in that part of the city at the time of the cataclysm. Uh, there's just, again, there's a lot of great information that you can use here. Uh, it's a pretty thorough uh, description of the, of the location. 
Then we have the Drow Encampment, so it gives you some, if you wanted to have Dritz or Jarlaxle there um, as NPCs in your campaign, it gives some abilities that they might be able to use that you could convert over to 5th uh, to edition. So again, just tons of great flavor on the city itself. The chasm. The under, underground area, Helm's Hold. Sanatorium. That doesn't sound like it's going to be pleasant. And again, just some beautiful artwork in here as well. Beneath Helm's Hold, Neverwinter Wood. And some of the locations that are found there that you could, you know, expand upon or flesh out if you wanted to, including uh, the Dread Ring, uh, which also gives rise to like the Ash Zombies, which are sort of like physical manifestations of the dead from the Cataclysm. They just sort of spawn uh, at random from these Ash Rings, and uh, they're sort of like the the fast zombies, I guess you could say. So they were they were cool enemies to use. The Fallen City, Velosk, Con uh, Conniberry, Mount Hotano itself. So like I said, that's that's the name they gave it. Gauntle Grim. So this is one of the earlier, um, those are the Delzoon Dwarven cities before, before the Dwarves started sort of splintering off into different sub-races, I think. The Delzoon uh, Dwarves were like the, the, the progenitor, I guess you could say, Dwarven race. And this was one of their most famous cities that was lost and thought to be nothing but legend until it was uh, rediscovered. So it gives you some information there. The Durgar Mines. The Fiery Pit were the, uh, the primordial sleeps. The Great Forge, which is... Uh, the forge is actually fueled by um, the primordial's power. So you can create some pretty, uh, you know, pretty impressive equipment using those forges. The Vault of Horrors in the Deepest Depths. I just love that artwork of the Mind Flare devouring a drought brain. And then we get into Evernight. So Evernight is the Shadowfell equivalent. So uh, for those who aren't, aren't super familiar, the Shadowfell is sort of like the Plane of Shadow, but it became more realized as a physical plane instead of it just being sort of like a transistive one like the positive or negative energy um so the the, the shadow fell is hands down one of my favorite uh planes of existence besides and maybe even more you know something that i love even more than the uh the regular prime material plane so the the concept behind the shadow fell is that it's just this twisted, dark, corrupted uh, version of the prime material world. So you might see towns or cities um, that look eerily similar to the cities that you're used to in the prime material world, only they're just something unsettling about it. So here we have the map of Evernight. So like I said, it looks very similar uh, to the map that we had of uh, Neverwinter itself. Whoops, if I can find that here, just give me a second. I think it's in the gazetteer section here. Yeah, so here we have the map of Neverwinter, and here we have the map of Evernight. So again, it looks very similar, but there's just, you can tell that there's just something off about it. So here, for example, the, the magma, the lava that flowed from Mount Hotano still actually flows through the center of the city, as opposed to, uh, you know, this river that we have here. So it's just, again, sort of an unsettling version of it. Um, there's the corpse market instead of the, uh, which is actually in the same location as the uh, Never Death, the main graveyard in the Prime Material world. So it's just, again, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a dark, corrupted, mirrored version of it. And I absolutely love it. So there's a lot of, again, cool stuff you could do here. And uh, so, I mean, one of the things I would love to do is write an adventure where, you know, there's, there's 
cult that you know wants to uh, weaken the veil or the the barrier that separates the shadow fell from the prime material world and maybe have them partially succeed and the characters kind of get sucked into the shadow fell for a period of time and then they have to deal with sort of that dark depressing um, plane of existence and go through and uh, and do something there so you know again you know th- the Thane wizards actually have an enclave in the uh, in Evernight so again there's just I think a lot of stuff that you could do with that but I just like I said I love the Shadowfell and having the Shadowfell equivalent to Neverwinter in this book as well just a great uh, great thing to have there. And then finally, we have the double-sided poster map that came with the original book. Uh, it's just the two maps that I'd shown there, uh, the one of Neverwinter on one side and then Evernight on the other side. But like I said, this is a really excellent book. There's a lot of great information here, setting information uh, that you could use to flesh out your 5th edition uh, adventures or campaigns that you want to set in the city of Neverwinter. Like I said, I, I've always found Neverwinter to be more interesting than Waterdeep. So for me, this is something that I would probably run before a Waterdeep based uh, campaign, at least for myself personally. Uh, and like I said, there's, you can even go back and take some of the fourth edition abilities that are available to the different classes in this book and find ways to either just use them as like NPC abilities or villain abilities, things like that. Or you could even try to convert them for the player characters and just give them a little bit of a, a twist, I guess, on the, the standard 5th edition class options. So there's a lot of great stuff in this book, and I think it is one of those resources that is absolutely still 100% valid, uh, even with uh, the fact that this is, you know, from a previous edition. I think it still holds uh, up very, very well in in a lot of regards. So I think there's a lot of great information that you could use in this book to um, develop stuff for your 5th edition campaign. And like I said, this is available through DMs Guild, Print on Demand, or the PDF. Uh, the maps that are included, the double-sided maps, if you buy the print versions, they would either not be in the book or they would be like extra pages tacked on, uh, each like the size of one eight and a half by 11 page. Uh, so if you do plan on getting the print-on-demand version and you want those maps, uh, what I would recommend would be to uh, get the PDF version alongside of it. They're usually either the same price um, if they're on sale or just a few dollars more, a couple dollars more to get the PDFs and then you could print off uh, the PDFs yourself or you could use them um, on like a laptop or whatever tablet, whatever you're using, if you're using tech stuff (laughs) at your table. Um, But yeah, I think that there's a lot of great stuff in here. So this is a book that I do recommend uh, from a previous edition if you're interested in this location specifically and you want to use that in your current fifth edition game. Uh, I will be looking through some of the other books in my collection to do videos along this line as well. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But let me know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite cities and some of your favorite campaign settings? It doesn't have to be Forgotten Realms. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, any of the traditional, you know, settings that you might think of. I just always like to hear some of your feedback on stuff like that. Uh, But for people that are interested specifically in Neverwinter, what are some of the more interesting things that you did in the city of Neverwinter in some of your previous campaigns or if you played the MMO, let me know what your thoughts were of it. Or if you're still playing it, let me know, because I kind of like to hear uh, if it's still even available <laughs> at this point, because I never really bothered to, to look into it. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Take care.